Listen carefully to every word you're about to hear. This is one Tech Talk that is truly worth special attention. He graduated from the U.S. Naval Academy and earned a master's degree in international relations from the Naval War College, a naval aviator. His assignments include Light Attack Squadron, USS Forrestal, and Light Fighter Squadron 37. He served as executive and commanding officer of Strike Fighter Squadron 15, executive officer in USS John C. Stennis, commanding officer in USS Coronado, and USS Nintz, and commander of Courier Strike Group 1, Carl Vinson Strike Group. He was deployed with both the Atlantic and the Pacific fleets, and has logged combat time in A-7s and F-18s over Grenada, Lebanon, Bosnia, and Iraq. He participated in Operation Urgent Fury, Earnest Will, Southern Watch, Deliberate Force, Iraqi Freedom, and led the initial Navy efforts for Haiti earthquake relief in Operation United Response. But wait, there's more. He served on the Joint Staff in Washington, completed Navy nuclear power training, served as Executive Assistant to the Commander U.S. Pacific Fleet, Director of Operations and Plans on the Chief of Naval Operations Staff in Washington, and Commander of Naval Air Force Atlantic. He was appointed to the rank of Vice Admiral in July 2013 as he assumed office as Deputy Chief of Naval Operations for Information Warfare and the 65th Director of Naval Intelligence. Greetings, everyone, and welcome from the Technology Association of Georgia. It's Friday, March 11th, and this is a very special Tech Talk. I'm your host, Frank Baia. His decorations include the Legion of Merit, Defense Meritorious Service Medal, Meritorious Service Medal, Strike Flight Air Medal, Navy and Marine Corps Commendation Medals with Combat V, Navy and Marine Corps Achievement Medal, and various unit and campaign awards. Oh, and did I mention? He's the keynote speaker at the Technology Association of Georgia Summit on Thursday, March 17th. It is an honor and a unique privilege to tech talk with Deputy Chief of Naval Operations for Information Warfare and the Director of Naval Intelligence, Vice Admiral Ted N. Branch. This edition of Tech Talk is brought to you by Globalspeak.com, new media consultants, corporate video and audio communications, video and audio production and distribution, live and virtual event production. Tag TV and Tag Radio is a service of Globalspeak.com, creatively delivering powerful marketing, video, and audio solutions. Admiral, welcome to Tech Talk. Well, thanks, Frank. It's a pleasure to be here. Admiral Branch, obviously a, an overwhelmingly impressive bio, but maybe we can get a little bit granular for our listening audience today. Um, maybe be a little bit more specific what you do for the U.S. Navy. Give us a little bit more detail. Okay. Uh, as, as you noted, I spent most of my career in naval aviation and the operating forces, but uh, since coming to uh, the CNO staff, the Chief of Naval Operations staff here in the Pentagon, what I spend my time on nowadays is more in the policy and oversight uh, area with budgeting, programming, and acquisition of the systems that we use for information warfare. And mm. Uh, actually, I wear uh, five different hats that uh, that would equate to business as the as uh, uh, the deputy, the resource sponsor for information warfare, controlling the purse purse string. So I'm a bit of a CIO. I'm the leader of the information warfare community in the Navy, which is about 52,000 officer enlisted and civilians. Uh, the chief information officer for the Navy, the director of Navy cybersecurity, which is keeping me busy lately and uh, also the, the Director of Naval Intelligence. I, I would assume that uh, all of that kind of keeps you a little bit busy. I don't, can't imagine what an average day must be uh, uh, in terms of trying to keep track of all of that information, and especially in today's uh, arena on a global basis, uh, uh, the intensity and the, uh, and the um, I guess the, the threats, for lack of a better description, are, are literally endless. But uh, I, I think our listening audience, I, you said something that I, I was intrigued by, and that's information warfare. Maybe go into a little bit about that. That's kind of an intriguing statement. What is information warfare? Well, that's a great question. Uh, the way we define information warfare is uh, actions and capabilities to defeat any enemy using uh, the three pillars, as we call them, of assured command and control, battle space awareness, and integrated fires. Uh, that includes the electromagnetic spectrum and, and cyberspace. 
um, you add freedom of maneuver in that information environment, and it gives us the flexibility we need to have knowledge of the battle space, both the physical and the enemy disposition and intent, and knowledge of the spectrum, knowledge of the environment. Uh, we tie that to our ability of commanders to uh, communicate with their units and assess their activities. And then integrated fires would be our ability to combine effects, whether they're information effects, uh, kinetic or non-kinetic, uh, delivered through the RF spectrum, the radio frequency spectrum, or cyber effects, or a, a gun barrel uh, to defeat an enemy. Um, I don't want to get too uh, drift into too much detail, but I, I'm, uh, I'm fascinated by the. You know, I know that in, in our enterprise private sector world, we constantly deal with analytics, and we're even dealing with predictive and prescriptive analytics, and all of the information not only in real time but in a collective environment over an extended period of time. Um, I'm, I'd be fascinated to go into that maybe in another conversation because I, I would think our listening audience would really would relate to that type of situation. But um, I know your time's valuable. I want to stay on track and, and go right to the heart of the matter, and that is the upcoming Georgia Technology Summit. Um, kind of an interesting invite. Uh, I'm sure you get asked to do a lot of speaking, especially with the, the subject being such a quote-unquote buzz as far as the industry and the globalization situation is concerned, both politically and in private industry. Um, why? You know, why are you coming to speak at the uh, Technology Summit? Well, uh, first, it's a great opportunity to get get down uh, to an area where we don't have a lot of interaction with the Navy, and talk about your Navy, and talk about uh, how we're partnering to advance some of the technology and capabilities that we need for the information age warfare. This is actually a follow up to a speaking engagement I did last June, where I spoke to the business executives for National Security. Uh, as well as the tag uh, while I was down there. And so it's a return engagement, and I'm looking forward to coming back down and, and uh, sharing some more uh, uh, conversation about uh, what we do as a Navy for the country and what we need from the tech sector uh, to advance our capabilities. Um, I, obviously, it's intriguing. Uh, without question, I'm going to think that a lot of our listeners are going to want to intensely understand and know about, as you point out, our Navy, but equally as so the kind of technologies and getting into some of the particulars as far as the industry is concerned. But then also the other side of it is is just the general subject of uh, Internet security and the general subject of security in general has affected all of us across the board, obviously from a military standpoint, national defense and safety, but certainly day after day after day it's in the headlines almost all the time. I certainly don't want to take anything away from what you're going to be doing at the event, but maybe can you give our audience a, a little bit of an insight? Uh, you know, uh, I guess where I'm going is, uh, from your perspective, what should we expect to hear from you? Well, what what I intend to do is uh, kind of give kind of give the uh, – the general landscape, our, our Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral John Richardson, uh, just rolled out in January his uh, what he calls his campaign design, and that's his blueprint for where he wants to take the Navy. And the way he frames that is uh, he, he gives a, a brief uh, synopsis of the conditions that are affecting uh, our operations and our Navy. And I'll do that. It's about, it's it's really four uh, boundary conditions, uh, for lack of a better term. And then he gives a a, a very brief uh, strategic overview of the threats that are facing us. And within that context, he talks about the things that we're going to do as a Navy to be able to advance and be effective and and protect the country. Um, within that framework, I'll talk about information warfare and and how we fit uh, as the information warfare community. Uh, into that framework. So it, it should be a good discussion. I'll, I'll talk about that, I'll talk about how we're moving the Navy into the information age of warfare, and then I'll I'll get to the bright and shiny object that we call cybersecurity uh, towards the end of my, my discussion. And I'm sure, as you say, there's, there's great interest in that topic, and it affects uh, literally everyone. Well, absolutely. Well, certainly listening to, knowing the, the bio and, and listening to some of the responsibilities that you have, uh, it makes it even more impressive taking the time that you have for even a few minutes to spend with us today on Tech Talk. Um, before we close, is there anything else you'd like to add? Well, I'm just looking forward to getting down to Atlanta, uh, at that return engagement, renewing acquaintances down there, and enjoying some of that great, famous southern hospitality. 
Well, Admiral Branch, thank you so much for, number one, joining us on the 17th at the Georgia Technology Summit, but also taking a few minutes out of what I know is an incredibly busy schedule to honor us by being here today on Tech Talk. Okay, thank you, Frank. I've enjoyed it.